Have you ever actually been wrong about an MP? You thought maybe they weren't that bad. Well, Johnny Mercer was that MP for me. Under Boris Johnson's government, he was the Veterans Minister, and he seemed to be quietly in the background doing his ministerial things, you know, his best for veterans under the circumstances. And he came across as one of those, you know, like half-decent Tories just trying to do the right thing. Then Liz Truss came in, and because he wasn't a supporter of her, she fired him. And I thought that was pretty harsh. But then he got reappointed under Sunak. However, as more and more Tories seemed to drop their trousers in public, he got pushed into more of the public limelight. And the more of the spotlight that was on him, the more you kind of see that he's just as awful as the rest of them. From claiming a young MP is like a character from the in-betweeners and not understanding how people function. You people in, in politics, I mean, I, I think we mustn't become a sort of uh, repeat of the in-betweeners, right? So um, I think you've got to have people who've what do you mean by that? done stuff. Well, this guy has, has, you know, he's been at Oxford University more than he's been in a job. Um, he, he, you put a chip in him there and he just relates Labour lines. And the problem is people have kind of had enough of that, right? They want people who are authentic, people who've worked in that constituency, um, who, who know what life is like, understand what life is like. To say in people that using food banks is a personal choice because they don't know how to budget, which is clear that he doesn't understand how people actually function. I carried that story last month. Look, these are these are personal decisions around, uh, um, uh, you know, how people um, are budgeting every month. I don't want to see anyone using food banks. Of course, so I don't. People but we're don't in... choose to use food banks. You're saying it's a ch it's a choice whether they use them or not. It's not. They're using them because they they're saying they have no other alternative. Well, in my experience, Kay, that's not correct. Um, I think uh, there are some dire cases that we need to do more to wrap our arms around and make sure that um, they're a safety net for people. I don't think food bank use is an accurate. Uh, portrayal of where levels of poverty, relative or absolute poverty, are in this country. Well, it's one thing to mock others and not really understand other people's jobs, but it's a very poor show when you're actually laughing at the stuff that you're supposed to be responsible for. In a statement he made, he said 5% of veterans from Afghanistan that have settled here still need permanent accommodation. And when asked for an actual number, he started giggling about it. It's quite disgusting, really. 31st in August. The government has successfully ended the use of bridging hotels for legally resettled Afghans. We estimate over 85% of those who were in bridging accommodation at the end of March 2023 have been helped into homes or pre-matched into settled accommodation. Ending the provision of bridging accommodation was the right thing to do for our Afghan friends. Despite this support, however, some families have moved into temporary accommodation under local authority homelessness provision. This is less than 5% of the 24,000. The minister used some unclear, unclear language in his state statement when he talked about how many people are in temporary accommodation under local authority homeless provision. He said this is less than 5% of 24,600. In July, I challenged him to say no Afghan family who helped our forces in Afghanistan would be homeless because of his policy of evictions. The minister said at the time, and I quote, there is no reason why any of these individuals should be homeless at the end of this process, given what is on offer. But we can see that now. Isn't it clearer than saying less than 5% of 24,600 if the minister were to say there are 1,000 people who are accessing homeless provision because of his eviction policy? Could he give a precise number of how many Afghans he has evicted are accessing homelessness provision of local authorities up and down the country? Mr Deputy Speaker, we gave a solemn pledge that we would support those people who served our armed forces. I realise the Minister is smiling at that commitment, but a 1,000 people accessing homelessness support is nothing to smile about, Minister. This is not the opportunity for a giggle on the front bench. This is an opportunity for us to be taken seriously as a nation because we promised people that we had arrived in the United Kingdom and those people who are still fleeing the Taliban in Afghanistan and those people in Pakistan that we would provide safety. He has done some of that with his eviction policy, but there's more that needs to be done. I know he's finding this funny and he's giggling on the front bench. This is not funny, Mr Deputy Speaker. This is not funny. I know all too well from the casework that I've been doing for Afghan families. I know, I know there's... Let me know if there's anybody you thought was a pretty decent MP that turned out to be just as awful as the rest of them. Put their name down in the comments. That's who they are. Prime Minister also is too weak to stand up to Liz Truss and to see why you'll need to see the video that's on screen now. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.